Hello guys, Artives here. In this video, I want to show you some beginner-friendly tips for the 3ds Max automated retopology function. I use it a lot these days, and I really want to share it, because it makes my workflow so much faster. If you are absolutely new to it, this is how it works. You create some shapes, merge them or subtract from one another by using the Probolin tool, and then just retopologize the model by setting the approximate poly count you wish to achieve. The retopology tool won't handle most of advanced models all by itself, so you may want to implement some changes into your workflow considering its possibilities. The easiest approach is to combine it with symmetry. As you can see here, automated retopology doesn't handle chamfered edges very well. Of course, you can play around with its settings and target poly count, but the easier way will be to find the corner that actually looks good, and to copy it two times by using the symmetry on two different axes. Make sure to not to retopologize unnecessary geometry. This is why I delete all circle caps here. The other tip revolves around merging cylinders with uneven amounts of sides. The idea is absolutely simple – only merge cylinders to flat surfaces by creating different layers of geometry. As you can see here, reducing the radius of the inner pipe made me able to retopologize its top and bottom holders separately. No matter how many edges they'll get after the retopology is complete, I'll still be able to merge them, and all interactions will happen on a flat surface. I've only used the symmetry once here, but you may play around with mirror and rotate it the way you like it. After you are done with the automated retopology, feel free to apply any cosmetic changes you like. I'm talking about some stuff like chamfers here. When dealing with some symmetrical objects, like simple robot's eyes, for example, I'd recommend to only pull in and retopologize a single eye, and then apply symmetry. Make sure to spend enough time picking a proper amount of target polygons, so that you won't discover some annoying problems later on, on modeling phase, when it will be a lot harder to change anything. TubeSmooth function works great if you want to make your model less edgy, and also if you spend some time clearing out the unwanted geometry. If you are dealing with a cylinder, you can reduce the amount of sides on its back. Also, you don't need most of those horizontal lines. Automated retopology is also one of the best ways to attach various objects to cylinders. This can be used to create a gun's front side or some similar objects. Just don't use it on the rifle itself, only on small parts of its barrel. After using the retopology tool, you may want to remove unwanted geometry and to spherify barrel's ends to prevent some random changes. Also, you may want to apply some minor changes to the topology itself, if you so desire. The simple way to attach this barrel to the workpiece I've done before is to create a connector module that has two flat surfaces. In this case, you won't be puzzled over topology. The final method I want to share with you today is great for making some robot insects or sci-fi drones. It is also great to approach hard surface modeling. As you can see here, I create a sphere and remove one of its poles to get a potential flat connector. Also, I create a cylinder, align its pivot point to the center of sphere and subtract it from one of its sides. Then I apply symmetry again. Once you've applied symmetry, make sure to check your model for some potential shading problems. Also, you can clear some geometry here by using target weld function. I've used this method to create my mechanical spider model. 
This way you can take a lot of inspiration from some real-life models, commonly made of junk. Thanks for watching, guys! If you got any value from this video, make sure to subscribe to my channel for more stylized content. And most importantly, have a great day!